Like all arthropods, chelicerates have segmented bodies will jointed limbs, all covered in a cuticle made of chitin and proteins. Helmetia is unstreamlined and would likely be a slow swimmer. However, the flattened body and filamentous limbs suggest a floating or swimming lifestyle. It has been interpreted as a nectonic suspension feeder. Sediments present in the gut of Naroya suggest that it may have been a deposit feeder, eating large amounts of soil, like an earthworm. A very large, complex system of gut diverticula and a gut with great holding capacity indicate that its diet was low in nutrition. Sea spiders are not true spiders, or even arachnids, their traditional classification as chelicerates would place them closer to true spiders than to other well-known arthropod groups, such as insects or crustaceans. They are cosmopolitan, found in oceans around the world, they are mostly carnivorous predators or scavengers. The morphology of the sea spider creates an extremely well-suited surface area to volume ratio for any respiration to occur through direct diffusion. Oxygen is absorbed by the legs and is transported via the hemolymph to the rest of the body. Ophicolis is a basal form of Eucalicerata. It is suggested that the Shellicerata contain the Pantopoda and Eucalicerata. The Eucalicerata are divided into Xiphosura, Eurypterida and Terrestrial Arachnida. Scorpions are considered to be the sister group of all other arachnids. The Akari diverged early with an independent evolution. Xiphosura has hardly changed in millions of years. The modern horseshoe crabs look almost identical to prehistoric genera such as the Jurassic Mesolimulus, and are considered to be living fossils. The most notable difference between ancient and modern forms is that the abdominal segments in present species are fused into a single unit in adults. A large compound eye with monochromatic vision is found on each side of the prosoma, it has five simple eyes on the carapace, and two simple eyes on the underside, just in front of the mouth, making a total of nine eyes. Horseshoe crabs use hemocyanin to carry oxygen through their blood. Because of the copper present in hemocyanin, their blood is blue. In recent years, population declines have occurred as a consequence of coastal habitat destruction and overharvesting. Brachiopterus is distinguished by its small size. All of its legs are walking legs and the abdomen is narrow and ends in a short styliform telson. Stylonoroidea, which lived from Silurian to Devonian, were characterized by their last pair of prosomal appendages, which were developed as walking legs, or less commonly developed as swimming legs with paddles formed by the expansion of the two or three penultimate joints. Stylonorus is distinguishable from other stylonorids by their smooth surface, and the greatly elongated last pair of walking legs, which reached as far as the telson, which was long and styliform. Megarachne have been recovered from deposits that had once been a freshwater environment and was originally thought it was a giant spider. Its blades on the anterior appendages would have allowed it to sweep feed to rake through the soft sediment of the rivers it inhabited in order to capture and feed on small invertebrates. In comparison to the comparatively warm climate of the earlier parts of the Carboniferous, the late Carboniferous was relatively cold globally. This climate change likely occurred during the Middle Carboniferous due to falling CO2 levels in the atmosphere and high oxygen levels.
Iriopterous fossils often occur in similar sizes in a given area. This may be a result of the fossils being sorted into windrows as they were being deposited in shallow waters by storms and wave action. Several species distinguishable by closer placed eyes and spines on their swimming legs were split off into the separate genus Iriopterus. Modeling studies on Eurypterus swimming behavior suggest that they utilized a drag-based rowing type of locomotion where appendages moved synchronously in near-horizontal planes. Examinations of the respiratory systems of Eurypterus have led many paleontologists to conclude that it was capable of breathing air and walking on land for a short amount of time. Carcinosomatid Eurypterids had unusual proportions and features compared to other Eurypterids, with a broad abdomen, thin and long tail and spined and forward-facing walking appendages. They were not as streamlined as other groups but had considerably more robust and well-developed walking appendages. Mixoteris likely walked on the bottom with a gait similar to most insects. The two heavy and specialized frontal appendages, held above the bottom, would balance the weight of the long abdomen. Mating in Mixoteris would likely be similar to that in horseshoe crabs. Megalograptus was relatively large for an Ordovician predator. It is not only noteworthy for being only one of the earliest known Eurypterids, but also for being one of the most unusual genera described. Particularly interesting is its enlarged third appendage, different from all other known Eurypterids in its length and the long spines directed towards its center. The exact use of these strange adaptations to the appendage is unknown, perhaps the basket-like structure of the spines would have allowed Megalograptus to rake through the sediment to find prey. The territorial expansion of Adelophthalmus had begun early, with representatives found in both Siberia and Australia during the Devonian, but it first gained its almost cosmopolitan distribution following the amalgamation of the supercontinent Pangaea during the Carboniferous and Permian. Cumularia is the most basal known member of the Pterygodioidea, it dominated the communities in brackish and fresh water. It lacked the expanded and flattened telson that the pterygotids had, this suggests that it did not need to use the telson as a rudder to swim. Visual acuity can be determined in arthropods by determining number of lenses in their compound eyes and the interomatidial angle. It is especially important to distinguish different ecological roles in arthropods, being low in modern active arthropod predators. Pterygotus had a very high visual acuity, which researchers could determine by observing a large number of lenses in their compound eyes. It was among the largest Eurypterids and was an active predator noted for its robust and enlarged chelicerol claws that would have allowed it to puncture. All known pterygotids possessed chelicerol claws. The first joint of the chelicere, where it connects to the epistoma, would have been capable of turning the entire appendage in a twisting way, which has led researchers to conclude that the function of the chelicere would not have been only, or even primarily, for defense but rather to capture and convey food to the mouth. Trigonoderbids superficially resemble spiders, but can be easily recognized by having tergites on the dorsal side of the abdomen divided into median and lateral plates. The chelicerae are of the pocket knife type consisting of a basal segment and a sharp curving fang. Acarines are extremely diverse. They live in practically every habitat, and include aquatic and terrestrial species. They outnumber other arthropods in the soil organic matter and detritus. Many are parasitic, and they affect both vertebrates and invertebrates. They breathe through trachea, stigmata, intestines and the skin itself. Many of them are eyeless. The evolutionary history of scorpions goes back to the Silurian period 430 million years ago. They have adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions, and they can now be found on all continents except Antarctica. 
All scorpions have a venomous sting, but the vast majority of the species do not represent a serious threat to humans, and in most cases, healthy adults do not need any medical treatment after being stung. Scorpions are also known to glow a vibrant blue-green when exposed to certain wavelengths of ultraviolet light such as that produced by a black light, due to the presence of fluorescent chemicals in the cuticle. This fluorescence may have an active role in scorpion light detection. Scorpions exhibit photophobic behavior, primarily to evade detection by predators such as birds. They have a very efficient food storage organ and a very low metabolic rate combined with a relatively inactive lifestyle. This enables scorpions to survive long periods when deprived of food. Giant Deathstalker is a dangerous medically significant scorpion, which can both sting and spray its curtoxin venom. Chimerarachne is not ancestral to spiders, being much younger than the oldest spiders which are known from the Carboniferous, but it appears to be a late survivor of an extinct group which was probably very close to the origins of spiders. It suggests that there used to be spider-like animals with tails which lived alongside true spiders for at least 200 million years. The name whip scorpion refers to their resemblance to true scorpions and possession of a whip-like tail. Vinigaroon is based on their ability when attacked to discharge an offensive liquid which contains acetic acid, producing a vinegar-like smell, giving rise to the common name vinigaroon. Mastigoproctus gigantis have eight eyes, two in a pair on the front of the head and three on each side of the head. These eyes are very weak, so it navigates mostly by feeling with its long front legs, tail, and pedipalps. Anatomically, spiders differ from other arthropods in that the usual body segments are fused into two tagmata, the cephalothorax and abdomen, and joined by a small, cylindrical pedicel. Unlike insects, spiders do not have antennae. To avoid being eaten by the females, which are typically much larger, male spiders identify themselves to potential mates by a variety of complex courtship rituals. Males of most species survive a few matings, limited mainly by their short life spans. Their abdomens bear appendages that have been modified into spinnerets that extrude silk from up to six types of glands. Spider webs vary widely in size, shape and the amount of sticky thread used. It now appears that the spiral orb web may be one of the earliest forms, and spiders that produce tangled cobwebs are more abundant and diverse than orb web spiders. Jumping spiders have some of the best vision among arthropods and use it in courtship, hunting, and navigation. Although they normally move unobtrusively and fairly slowly, most species are capable of very agile jumps, notably when hunting. The red and blue colored males of peafowl jumping spider have flap-like extensions of the abdomen with white hairs that can be folded down. They are used for display during mating. Sydney funnel web spider bites is capable of causing serious illness or death in humans if left untreated. There is at least one recorded case of a small child dying within 15 minutes of a bite from a funnel web. They typically build silk-lined tubular burrow retreats with collapsed tunnels or open funnel entrances from which irregular trip lines radiate over the ground. The long-lived female funnel web spend most of the time in their silk-lined tubular burrow retreats. When potential prey walks across the trip lines, they rush out, subduing their prey by injecting their venom. Unlike other species of spider, females goliath birdeaters do not eat the males during mating. 
females have an average lifespan of 25 years, while males die soon after maturity and have a lifespan of 6 years. In response to threats, they stridulate by rubbing setae on their pedipalps and legs. Also when threatened, they rub their abdomen with their hind legs and release hairs that are a severe irritant to the skin and mucous membranes. 